Hey guys, this is Nathan, and welcome back to Forever Stranded. Hope you guys are doing good today. I'm doing pretty good. So, I have done a lot of work between episodes and got this first building, well, basically completed. At least the outside of it is mostly completed. I also vastly expanded our fenced area, and that's keeping husks and everything out but occasionally I do get zombies in here and I have no clue where they're coming from now also I have been doing a lot of things with exploring down in the uh, abandoned mine shaft that is down in the sandstone area because yeah we need tons of sandstone for this build obviously and that has given us more than a few more deaths. So we're up to 10 deaths now. A bunch of these were down in the mine shaft. A couple of them were from attempting to regain my stuff. I did have to have a silk touch shovel just so, well, silk touch. I put some glass in the wrong spot. But I have taken a few little hints that you guys have said and I think they should help us out a bunch. Now, one of them was to put a door on this side of the ship. Now, it does help, but I've also removed the wing, and so these guys don't walk up here very much anymore. So I have to go out and do that, swat one of them, and then they'll all come pouring in here. Now, one of the things that I have not done yet, but I do want to try, was using an obsidian pressure plate in order to make it to where we can come in easily, but the zombies cannot. And I think that's a really good idea. So I may be doing that later. Now, another thing that I have done is to start raising mustard here now. Now, the reason for using the mustard is actually a pretty good one. And we're just gonna go ahead and harvest a bunch of this stuff because even though I've got tons of food currently, I don't ever want to get behind on food. That is not something that I want to have happen. Let's go ahead and put our torches back in our offhand. Oh, we still don't have enough inventory space. Gee, many crickets. Well, anyway, I guess we'll have to come back down for the barley. And that's just because I've been building and I haven't cleared my inventory yet. And we'll actually go ahead and clear oh, and look at how much logs we have. Cleared out tons of fences down in the uh mine shaft as well and no we don't have room for those but yeah we're we're actually running a bit low on sandstone at the moment so yeah it's it's kind of important that we continue to get sandstone constantly especially with this build style now what i've been doing with this mustard i take it and turn it into mustard seeds now the reason for this is that we can actually turn mustard seeds into cooking oil and grain bait. And I think, yep, recently did that. I'll go ahead and wait until we have another stack of seeds for that. But so we are getting tons of cooking oil. And so because of that, uh, I have been able to make, I think I had some tofutton and some tofigs. So, uh, the tofu eggs are really easy to make, but it does take an awful lot of yellow dye. So I was out there bone mealing for dandelions, but that brought me up to my next problem. And so the next problem that I have is this guy here, the windmill. So if we pop down here and look, we have 42 flour in our chest. But if we look here, we have a bunch of rice and barley in the millstone. And the windmill is turning, but the shafts aren't. And that's because our gearbox at the top of this windmill tower keeps breaking. And so I couldn't figure out what in the heck was going on with this. I had fixed it numerous times. But I could not figure out for the life of me what was going on with this. And so I did a little bit of reading online and found out that during thunderstorms, the gearbox will break if it is not given a redstone signal to disconnect it from the main power lines. Now, 
obviously we have no way of knowing when there's a thunderstorm going on. So I started doing a little bit of looking into better with mods and I did see something that could help us. So let's take a look at better with mods. And that is these guys here, these uh, chimes. So we can make bamboo versions and we can make metal versions. Now the metal versions just take a couple of iron ingots. The chime versions take a couple of sugar canes, some string, a pressure plate, but this is where it becomes a problem, a molding. So the moldings are gotten by running a vertical siding through the saw. And these sidings are made by running a plank through the saw. So we need to make ourselves a saw. And in order to do that, we're gonna to have to make a leather belt, which is going to get us through the entire process of making leather in Better With Mods. So I actually want to do a little bit of that stuff in our tower. The first thing that I am going to do though, I am gonna make up a whole bunch more of these axles. I'm gonna make up another windmill and we and tons of gearboxes as well and we are going to place let's see if we can see it from here on this side here where there is no window we are going to be having a gearbox well, well a shaft coming out this way toward us with a windmill on it we're also going to put one on the other side because one of the things that i have found about better with mods is that if you put too much power demand on a power source, oh, and that gearbox is broken again. Well, <laughs> I guess that's not going very far. But if you put too much demand on the power system, it will break something. And in the case of like, if we put two mills, which I actually have two mills, if we put two mills next to a hand crank, it will break the hand crank. So something will break. But one thing that I have found that's rather interesting with Better With Mods Power is it does not have a magnitude. So there is not an amount of power. It's either on or off. So the gearboxes only have one input spot. So you can never combine power sources like windmills or water wheels or vertical windmills together. And actually, I'm thinking about it, we may want to go with vertical windmills on this. I don't know. That's an interesting thought. But yeah, you can see we have a bit of a problem there and we've got a lot of stuff to get figured out in order to be able to hopefully address that issue. So I'm going to get a whole bunch of stuff ready so that we can get going here and I will be right back. All right, so I now have the windmill set up on top of the tower. I was going to do a vertical windmill on there. I don't know if it's going to look good or work or anything like that. But I have run that power all the way down to the second floor of this. And we are now running some leather through here to get the scored leather. So we're just going to get a few of those. Six of them should hopefully be enough. And we are going to continue on with getting our better than mods leather production. So to process these, the next thing that we need is a cauldron. So for the cauldron, we need a bone, a water bucket and iron or copper. Now I have tons of iron, so we won't be using the copper just yet. So let's go ahead and grab another bucket of water because I'm pretty sure that we need that. Now, I don't know. I think this needs a heat source, but I don't remember. I have messed with this a little bit in the past. No, hmm, I don't know. So the next thing that we need then is, and you know, I think I may just remove that door. We need these bark. Now that comes from running a, a log we right click it with an axe we get the bark and we get this debarked log but let's go ahead and put this in here so if we put the leather and the bark okay it is not doing anything we may actually need a fire source for this 
So here, let's go ahead and do this. I guess we have torches there. So let's grab... Um, what am I looking for? We need a bucket. That is not where the buckets are. There is a bucket. And we need a redstone. Yes, I've been doing a lot of sieving of stuff. So we should be able to grab a lava out of here. Drop that in there. Go ahead and right click on that with the redstone. Get a nether rack. And now let's go grab... You know what? Tag with it! Um... Where did my door go? Okay, whatever. I know I've broken those before with this pickaxe, so I don't know what happened there. Well, I know that we need a pair of shears. Oh, we have shears in our inventory. And then we need a flint and steel, which I could have sworn that we had one of those, but apparently we do not. So let's go ahead if, nope, that's gunpowder. I think the flint is in here, yes. So there's a flint. So let's go ahead and make a flint and steel. And let's go ahead and light this. So now, yes, this is now working. So this should now make the processed leather, this tanned leather. From that, we will need to cut it with a pair of shears and that will make our cut leather and then we can combine these together, or we have to cut them again? To be, okay, yes, we have to cut them twice to get the leather straps, and then we can combine those to make the belt. What is this, a haft? Oh, oh, okay. Well, that would be kind of neat. Well, let's see here, how is this going to work? Okay, so it just drops it in there, that is perfect, all right. So one piece of leather should be able to give us enough to make a leather belt. Actually, it looks like it'll make two leather belts. So let's go ahead and make the leather belt. There we go. So now we need a little bit more iron. And then we need some planks. We have planks. Okay, so we should, at this point, be able to make the saw. Where is the saw? Right there. So we have gears, we have the belt, we have iron, we have planks. We are missing our gears. We have them in there. Okay, let's try that again. So there we go, the saw. Now I think for this, we are going to grab the hand crank for the moment. And we're gonna go ahead and head back over here now, I think this thing requires its power to come in from the bottom and not the top. But we are going to try it here. Oh no. I think our gearbox broke again. Let's go up and take a look. We have a lot of gearboxes in here. So it does say that it will break the first gearbox. Yep, that one's broken. Great. So I guess we do get to do this by hand for the moment. So let's go ahead and place down our saw. Ooh, we can put it at an angle? Or is that the way that it naturally places? So if we, okay, we can put it sideways too. Interesting. So if we put it like that, I think we could power it from the back. That might not be bad. So I don't think that we can power this with the hand crank. Okay, so it does not appear that there's any type of interface with that. So I think what we have to do is place a block in front of it. I don't know how this works. Well, let's go ahead, pick all this back up, and let's go ahead and break this. And we will place our saw here because like I say I don't know for sure oh we can't do that because that well maybe we can I don't know I think I have another gearbox on me yes I do I've got a couple of them 
The problem is, is if this is breaking the gearbox, it's going to continue to break the gearbox until whatever storm is going by here quits. So I think if we place another gearbox here, yep, immediately it's broken. Oh, well, that is really annoying. Like, really annoying. Okay, well. I guess the other thing that we could potentially do then would be a water wheel, which does require... No, because we have to have sightings for that. Well, I guess I'm going to have to wait until these gearboxes don't break and then we can try this again so I had an idea that I want to try here because it keeps breaking my gearboxes so I'm going to try putting the saw directly on the axle from the windmill whoa okay yeah that doesn't work so that blew apart the sawmill <laughs> actually kind of cool all right well so we cannot cheat this at all so that kind of stinks but that did give us some sawdust that's interesting but also it took away a bunch of our iron to do that as well <sighs> we managed to get three of the pieces of leather back from the belt oh good lord all right, well, I guess. Waiting some more. All right, well, sun is setting. I've made a bed. Let's try sleeping and see if that will solve our issue here. So let's go ahead and come up top and see if we can drop in a gearbox without it breaking. So, gearbox, place in. Yeah, we're not breaking. All right, well, let's hurry down and get ourselves some wood cut then. So, yes. Okay, that is how this works. So, let's just cut a whole bunch of these because why not? I'm kind of curious if this thing will hurt us now. Oh, it will! <laughs> that is what the stone cutter should do. I think that's great. So, how many of these do we need to be able to make a water wheel? So, we need eight wooden blades and we need four each for those. So, that means we only need 32. Well,. Let's go ahead and get an entire stack. There we go. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do, just to keep this from happening again, because it broke the one on the other side that wasn't even powering anything, but to keep this from happening again in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and turn that off. And I think, that was weird. Did it just stop? Uh, can I go down the ladder, please? Okay, well, anyway. So now we should have a great deal, plenty of these to make some other things. So we do need glue or what was the other thing that we needed for that? We could use slime rice balls, slime balls, slime in a bucket, slime ball, slime ball, coagulated blood, ew, or glue. Well, here, let's see here. The glue... Okay, so in a stoked cauldron, how do we set up a stoked cauldron? I think that requires this hibachi. Oh, yeah, we're not getting to that anytime soon. That requires us to get into like the filtered hoppers, sandstone, or sandstone, um, soul sand, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, I don't think we're going to be doing that right away. Let's go ahead and get cooled down. I do think I'm going to be setting up little stations like this all over the base with a cooling coil. And I have found out these cooling coils affect all floors below them, which is actually very helpful. 
But uh, if we have a cooling coil with a little water puddle like this next to it, we can very rapidly cool down. So yes, I will probably be setting those up. I know later on we will be able to get a device that we can carry around with us that will allow us to stay cool all the time and warm for that matter. But uh, right now, I want to kind of stay on the low end of the tech. You know, the high-tech stuff, we will be getting there eventually. I just don't want to go there yet. So, what we need to do here, we need... Let's see here. So, we had some rice. Um, what was... Because we don't have a lot of slime. And speaking of slime, my helmet broke. You can see my armor has taken a heck of a beating. But, now that I think about it, we do still have a little bit of slime... Yeah, we've got 40 slime balls, so we should be good on that. So let's go ahead and make up eight of these. And then we will make ourselves a water wheel. Now, the nice thing about the water wheel is the fact that it will not overpower at any time. So that is definitely a bonus. But I believe it takes a very large area of flowing water. And of course, our water is such, with no infinite sources, that we have to have a lot of water. So let's just do a little bit of experimenting with this. Let's go ahead and start here, and we'll just dig out an area. I think it was supposed to be like a 5x5 five five area of flowing water or something like that. That's only four. Okay, so let's go a little bit further here. Okay, so if we have it set up like this, this may not completely power it. So now let's go ahead and set up just a simple little framework here. And we'll see how big this thing needs. I think that is how high we need to be. And that should be into the center. So, it doesn't say anything. Oh, we have to have an axle. We have to place down an axle, and then if we place that there, yes, we're out of the water. So, let's go ahead and move that down one block. So, axle, water wheel. Now, yes, that is turning. All right, awesome. So that's not terribly big. Now, question is, can we make that smaller? If we only have a one wide, um, excuse me. If we only have a one wide water source, will this stop working? That looks like it's still working to me. All right, so we could we could go ahead and use a water wheel to power this. And like I say, that will never overpower. So now if we grab, let's say, well, let's go ahead and go grab the sawmill. So we'll grab that guy and let's give this a shot and see because we should be able to power this directly off of the water wheels axle. Nice. Okay, so now we can we can make as many of those as we want. Oh, that is nice. So, yeah, I may have to do a little bit of rethinking on this. I like the water, but or the wind, but if that's going to be intermittent power based on storms, I don't know if I really like it. Well, what we do need, we do need to cut some of these again into the moldings. So let's go ahead and get a few of these cut into moldings. There we go. And now these we should be able to use to make our... Uh, 
oh, whatever they are, the wind chimes. So let's grab ourselves some sugar cane. And so then we'll need some pressure plates. So I'm gonna make two of these. And then the wind chime here. Oh, we are missing string. Wrong chest. All right, bamboo chimes. There we go. Now, when it is stormy, these are supposed to give off a redstone signal. So they do say that they require access to the sky and apparently they cannot be placed on the side of a block. So let's go ahead and grab an oak plank here. And it's making noise. And it shut our door. That's actually really cool. All right, so let's just do a little test here and see if we actually have a redstone signal coming from that and how strong it would be. Oh my God, our inventory is a mess. All right, well, let's drop off some sand and dust here and a little bit of our junk. We don't need a lot of this at the moment. We will try to get some of that other stuff figured out later on. So yeah, that's, why are you in there? All right, so there we go. That should give us at least a little bit of space in our inventory. All right, little bit of redstone dust. Now it's not making any noise. So what I want to see is if that is making its noise, will this power? Right now it is not powered, so I don't know, I might just have to wait around for a bit. Well, I guess for now, what we'll do is we will go up and we'll try to figure out a way to get this to be able to turn off the gearbox at the top of the windmill when a storm is coming in. So if we pop up here, the first gearbox is gonna be right there. So actually we should be able to hang that here. Oh, that's a half slab. Oh, so close. Okay, well, here, let's just, we, yeah, I'm gonna have to go get some stuff. Well, let me get that hooked up. I will watch that one by the door and see if it does indeed give a power source at times. Obviously it should because it did energize the door. But yeah, I'll try to get this all figured out. Well, that actually works and it works surprisingly well. It doesn't just work with storms. So if we walk into this, it temporarily stops the axle and then we can hear the noise. Now, the other thing is we let it go again. We can right click on it and it will temporarily put out a redstone signal. That's pretty cool. So for now, I am going to leave this open like this, but yeah, we also have a broken gearbox on the back side. But also, I thought this kind of helped a little here, putting full blocks there. We'll kind of take a look. I missed a window. But uh, full blocks there because we do have the gearbox underneath it, and then that allows us to hang the wind chime next to it. Now, the one thing the wind chime does say is that it does have to have access to the sky in order to work. But at this point, we should actually be able to go and grab some of the stuff that we had for grinding grain because that is going to be one of the main uses of this area so let's go ahead and grab wrong cabinet 
Let's grab our barley, some rice, and yeah, I think for now we'll just do that. And then grab our stuff here. We will need the hopper and we will need a chest for the output. So we've got that. And then I think we're just going to go with some glass around it for the moment. And let's be sure that we grab our glass panes as well so that we can fix that. But yeah, we can click on that and it will put out a redstone signal. So that does work. So let's go ahead and try to get a little bit of something set up here. Now, I probably should make another wooden hopper, but right now I think we're okay. Um, do I want that? Yeah, we'll elevate it one block into the air. So let's go ahead and place down a millstone here, and we can drop these in there right away. So now, just like we had to do before, we will need to surround this with some glass to keep it from throwing items where we don't want it. And we will eventually have something else there, but I, I'm kind of afraid that what's gonna happen is this is going to throw the items up into the axle area. But I guess we can give this a shot and see what happens. So let's put a chest down here and oh yeah that will definitely do it so let's go ahead and change our chest to be here then we will place our wooden hopper again into the side of that and then put a little bit more glass around this and we actually have an extra if i put one there what will happen Okay, so it looks like that got sucked up. So we've got seven in there right now. Well, we know that we put in three stacks. So I guess at this point now, I just let this run for a little bit. Eventually, I will have to set this up with uh, an input hopper as well, because I believe we can do that. But yeah. I'm going to let this run and see if we can grind all of that without losing any of it because I have lost a little bit of ground stuff in the past. Well, that is definitely giving off a redstone signal right now. So let's go up and see. At this point, we should not have a broken gearbox and we should not be grinding anything. So if we look here, the axle has stopped. We have 49 things ground so far. And if we go up to the top, we can already hear the wind chime. And we do not have a broken gearbox. Oh, that is perfect. That makes me happy. Now, one thing that I have found, so I was just looking at some of the recipes that Better With Mods has for this sawmill. I was trying to figure out what all we could do with these moldings and sidings. And sidings can be used in a lot of places. But uh, what I wanted to do, so we have a whole bunch of these moldings. So what we can do is run the moldings back through again. And that's also another thing. So the moldings, we can place them in all kinds of different configurations. So, yeah. We can, we can do some pretty weird things with those moldings, but what I want to do is cut them down again into these corners. The corners cut into gears, two per corner. So it is a lot more efficient for materials than actually crafting the gears. Now this is a problem with this, so one of the things that I do need to do here is put something underneath. So we'll go ahead and place that right there. So hopefully that will stop this from throwing items underneath. So let's just make up a few more things here. Occasionally they do come flying out at me, but I think that the hopper... Ooh. So yeah, that's going to be a bit of a problem. 
If that's what it's going to do, that we can occasionally have a... Wait. I have an idea. I have an idea. Let's go ahead and come in here and make another wooden chest, which... In all actuality, that wooden chest, let's go ahead and see, uh, let's just look up, uh, er, wooden chest, wooden hopper. So if we look up the recipe on the wooden hopper, okay, it can only be made with planks. I was kind of hoping that maybe we could use the sidings for that, but no, that's fine. And let's also go ahead and grab a bucket of water. We're going to have to get that automated here very soon. So if we instead... Let's go ahead and just remove this for a second. And then we will grab our Silk Touch shovel that we got from a zombie. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place another hopper pointing into that hopper. Now, I don't know for sure if that will actually work. Because I know these hoppers do not have an internal inventory. So there we go it is back up and running so we'll just cut a bunch of these for a while and see if we ever get anything sitting in that back we know that it can't move it but it seems like everything is running through And nothing has come through on the back. So that's good. Well, let's go ahead and make a few more gears. That actually makes me really happy to see that this is working the way that I had thought that it should. So, yeah, I'm going to make a whole bunch of gears. And then I will be back. Well, that answers that question. So, no, we cannot have a wooden hopper pushing into a wooden hopper. And I thought that was the case. So, hmm, yep. Can't do that. Well, the good news is, is I didn't lose a single bit of flour in that. So I was looking through some of the recipes that we can use the millstone on. Some of these are actually kind of handy. You know, we can double sugar cane being made into sugar, which is kind of nice. We can also do the hemp into hemp fibers which again the better with mods hemp i really struggled to get that to grow i don't know why but on this second page here bones into six mean bone meal effectively doubling our bone meal up but that is kind of nice now there's a lot of other pages of recipes here of course a lot of stuff dealing with the leather and uh we can turn blaze rods into blaze powder Beets into rose red. This is a nice one. Dandelions into four dandelion yellow. Uh, a little later, hopefully, we can figure out something with dyes because dyes seem to be absolutely horrible to get here. But obviously, we can use these to make tons of different dyes. These are the ones I have no idea we how we are supposed to get these. There's no recipes shown on how to get these other than if you have them, you can run them through the phytogenic insulator. So I don't know for sure what we're supposed to do with those. Apparently we can make sunflower seeds out of them. But uh, yeah, then of course all of our wheat, we can make cocoa powder, uh, cornmeal, black pepper, more cocoa powder, ground nutmeg, and curry powder so a lot of our stuff for our food prep can be made here in the grindstone or the millstone now one of the things that i did want to test was whether or not we could feed this thing with a hopper so i went ahead and grabbed a bunch of these bones and it will oh my god oh yes very nice let's see so it is running them in there, and we should be able to see... There's our first six bone meal. Oh, that is beautiful. I love it. So yes, we will be able to get something set up here. I want to make this look nice. So I don't know how I'm going to go about decorating this. 
Of course, we do have chisels and bits, but if I get into chisels and bits, expect my life to be over. I do not want that. So I will try to figure out some way that we can make this work. You know, I want to just be able to have a single input chest, single output chest, and I'll probably even have the output chest down here in the main floor. And I might even put the input chest down here too. You know, we are starting to get to the point of where we can start making item conduits and things like that. Now, of course, better with mods, I don't think they have anything that will allow us to move items around. Yeah, I don't see anything. Uh, one of the things I do kind of want to mess with, though, is this pulley block. We can actually make... Uh, yeah, we can make elevators with that. We need the pulley and we need an anchor block and then we can use the gearbox redstone operation to run up and down and if we do it properly we may be able to even set up multiple floors in an elevator I don't know that's gonna be some fun stuff to mess around with but yeah look at all that bone meal that is definitely a fair sight more than we would have seen. What I really wanted to see was if this was going to stop it from running any items back out that side, and it looks like it is. And I didn't mean to sleep, but okay, I will happily sleep. So yeah, I am really happy with that. We got a bunch of stuff figured out with Better With Mods today. So. Yeah, with that, I think I am going to say thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to give a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any thoughts about what I've been working on or anything that you want to see me work on, be sure to leave that down in the comments, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!